What if I told you that there is a game where you can play as all of your favorite movie characters from books, anime, TV show, video games, and even shitpost meme characters like Rick Astley or maybe Nintendo's Super Mario, but with a giant cock he can use to sexually assault his enemy with. Do you want me to use lubricant? I didn't ring any. Goodbye. Or you want to play as a Pokemon Master Chief? Well, uh, might I introduce to you, my friend, a game called Rivals of Aether. This pixel art-based platform fighting game is my favorite game better than all this shit here you see on screen. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the pros, the cons. You're also going to learn the basics about the character design because this game has mods. Like, it's community-driven. The whole game is super involved with the community because all the characters people play are from the Steam Workshop, so they have mods so they can make copyrighted characters like Sans, mm -hmm. Incineroar, all tons of really cool characters that normally if the game devs themselves made, of course they would instantly get a cease and desist from Nintendo, but because they're mods, they can get away with it. So everybody gets to play super fun characters. I mean, look at this guy. This is my main pissing Mario. He literally has a skin which makes him look like cum. I call him the semen demon, the rectum rupturer. That's bullshit. <laughs> what? What ah! the fuck? What 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 the fuck? I get to fight with this guy and I do super good. But Craft Cave, I want to play as Jeffrey Epstein and he's not in the game yet. Yeah, and I want to play as Adolf Hitler, but you have to be the change you want. If there's a character that's not out there, you can make him. This is Rivals of Aether, where I sexually assault my enemies with pissing Mario. I'm going to urinate on you. I hate you. And I proceed to cry, rage, and scream as I get pegged over and over and over by Incineroar with this fucking down air spike. Yeah. Oh, someone's <laughs> Three, two, one, go. So why do I like Rivals of Aether compared to all the other popular fighting games? Well, for one, it has a pixel art style, uh, which is really cool. I find that personally aesthetically pleasing and it also makes, despite that all, most of the characters and the maps people play are different workshop item, it keeps the art style relatively consistent because it's pixel based and also it's not as taxing on your computer that way. Pixel style is similar to Duck Game and I love that game, so a little bit of nostalgia points. Two is the mods. Like I said, the main reason most people play the game is the custom mods, the custom characters, the custom workshops. A lot of people have taken it upon themselves to port characters from Super Smash Bros who have the exact same sound effects, movesets, and all that. So if you're a Smash player, you'll like this game because a lot of the characters play the exact same way as Smash. You can also make really funny shitpost characters. A lot of them are overpowered. We'll touch on that in a second. Another big W regarding the workshop mods is that sometimes the developers, if they like the character and it's well made enough, they will actually make it a canon part of the game for example, Olympia, Pawnee. Oh my god, those thighs. <laughs> Hodan and Molo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Please forgive me. But yeah, those were workshop mods and the developer made them canon parts of the game. Shout out to Honduna for giving me that list, by the way. Three, good times. I just have a good time. It's really fun to play friends with. There's so much that happens. It can be really random at times. And it's just all around a fun game, period. If you disagree, you can kill yourself. Ow, I got drilled. Ow, I got drilled. Ow, I got drilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, now that you know why I love it so much, it's time for you to know why the game is actually shit. First issue is the default characters. It's not really an issue, but nobody really plays them, so sometimes you get that one friend who plays a default character, and you're like, dude, why? Not really a problem, but I just thought I'd mention it. Another thing is quality control because it's so community based with lots of maps and workshops. There isn't quality control. It's not like the admins approve what mods are and aren't allowed in the game. So a lot of the maps are just plain broken really bad. A lot of the characters are either so overpowered. It's not even funny. They're not fun or certain moves just break the entire game. And some of them are meant to be really good characters and they're super well made, but they're so graphically taxing on the game that it crashes everyone's game. But that tends to be a minority of the cases. So if you just go to Steam and sort by like most downloaded, or highest rated, then usually you'll be perfectly fine. One other issue is the lag. The lag on this game is so bad. Now, most of us avid gamers know that the standard of what makes bad lag game to game is different. For example, in Rainbow Six Siege, if you have 100 ping, that's pretty bad, but you can still play and get kills with it. But in Counter-Strike, if you have over 70, you are teleporting all over the map and it's just borderline unplayable. In Rivals of Aether, if you have, in my experience, over 50 ping, it is so bad. The lag is immense. And also maybe because it's peer to peer, there aren't dedicated servers. If one person even has a tiny bit of lag, everybody suffers immensely. So it's not like the one guy who has shit internet, it has input delay. It's everybody gets like 12 FPS if one guy has a single lag spike. Lag is probably the most predominant issue that me and my buddies face when we play the game. They have apparently fixed that in the new rollback update. 
so far I've been playing and it has been a slightly smoother experience. It just causes a little bit of input delay. And fortunately, the person who suffers the most is actually the person with bad internet. So now if you have even semi-decent internet, you should be okay. Next thing is the occasional game breaks with mods and different versions of the game. So the game has updates and often they destabilize the current mod meta. So all the popular characters will just stop working when the game updates until the developers of those mods patch them or the developers of the game fixes them. So for example, when the rollback update came out, me and my buddy Utena 360 who play the game together all the time and have epic beefs on stream and shit, you should, you should just follow us both. So we join and play our main characters, which we've been playing since the beginning of time and the game will just And one common issue is that occasionally for no reason at all, you'll just get a desync error. So like you'll be in the middle of fighting, there won't be a lag spike, there'll be nothing. It'll be performing perfectly smoothly and then finally awake. It's always a big bummer when that happens because it always seems to be at the perfect coincidence when you're just about to win the game and it's the tightest moments in the suspense and the tension is high. Kind of like when they were raiding Jeffrey Epstein's house to finally put him in a fret and just bing, you just get booted, disconnected from the call. It's a real shame. Also because of the instability with characters on version to version, each group of players tends to have a different version of Rivals of Aether they like because they're not always checking the new versions and updating to see if they're stable and checking in on them. So you get a new player and he'll play a different version and you're playing with two different groups and you got to go back and forth in the Steam beta controls to pick what version you want to play. However, the latest version, it seems to be everyone switching into because they have patched it and it's a lot more stable now. Alrighty, so that is over. Now we are going to talk about the character creation. Now, me being a full-time video editor, I work all the time. I'm not really into the character creation personally. Maybe I'll do it at some point. I'm not going to be the guy who tells you about this. My good friend and fellow content creator and animator, Atena360, were really good friends. Check him out. He has created one character, this guy, and I think he's working on another one. So we're going to do a little funny segue over to him, and uh, he's going to explain to you how the character creator works. Enjoy. Subscribe to his channel also. No. I'm not doing that transition. <laughs> Hi, I'm Atena360. I play Rivals of Aether with Crab often. I'm also an animator and a collab host now for my work on Hyun's Dojo. So creating your own character in Rivals of Aether is not necessarily complicated, but it's not as easy as just changing a few things in an in-game editor because they don't have an in-game editor. Rather, you primarily use your own sprite animation program. Primarily, you would use Game Maker 2, some uh, sprite maker like Ace Sprite, for example something to export it into a sprite sheet, which a sprite also does, and Rivals of Aether to test out your workshop character. And the creators of Rivals of Aether actually have a neat little website that gives you all the information in case you want to make your own workshop character. Pretty much how it works is you create a little sheet of all of the moves, all of the animations that you want to make every single uh, thing that you want to implement into your character and then you'll start with the sprite work and they can normally start as like a rough sprite or you can just finish off with the straight up polished thing you can then use the template that the creators of rivals of aether had made for you the sandbert template and you can just replace its sprites with yours and then you change a little bit of code so there's going to be one file for each and every single move and one big file for all of the general movements like dodging walking running turning parries, but the main fun is in the attack file. So long as you know basic code, you can kind of break down what each line of code means and you can test it out live in the workshop. They have a mechanic where you can just refresh your character file and boom, it's updated. Though it is arguably a lot more difficult to create a character in Rivals of Aether than just say a normal character creator. And I'd say that's a good thing because that can lead to very, very creative and in-depth characters being put out there into the world. And the ones that are super high quality are gonna be the ones that get used very frequently. For example, Psy, if you know Rivals of Aether and you know the workshop, you know who Psy is. They are synonymous for creating some of the most overpowered yet incredibly over-detailed characters on the workshop. And they pump them out so fast. You also have all of these stick figure uh, characters that keep being created. You have some of the original ones. I don't I can't name any of the original ones. <laughs> but you have the original ones. Uh, but then you also have uh, ones that were taken from the stick figure community like Yo-Yo, Fry, FL. You have other generally just brand new characters. You have people who recreate characters. You have 
someone who made Mario pissing. Even some of the comedic ones are really good. And that's not to say that there aren't any shit characters, because there are some people who can just take some sprites, alter them a little bit, and replace only the sprites, and then release the, uh, release that into the world. They don't really do anything special with it. They're just re-spriting Sandberg. But once you filter throughout all of the garbage, you can get to some actually really unique and creative characters. I haven't even created a character of my own, and another one is in the works. I made Meme Dream, who's really not the best, <laughs> but I'm currently making a, a better one, a more well thought out character, and Meme Dream will be getting a reskin eventually. So yeah, that's pretty much how the character editor works. Back to you, Crab. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you for that segment, I don't know. Um, now we will be talking about the last epic beat. You see, me and my buddy Adena, if you've been following either of us for a while on twitch.tv slash crowdcave, twitch.tv slash Adena360, you would know that we randomly challenge each other in these streams. We ran a, you know, he'll be animating, I'll be animating, we join it like, hey, bitch, play Rivals with me. And unfortunately, despite our over a year long Rivals of Aether beef, I always fall in it just, just short. And I tend to lose. Sometimes I'll have a day where I win and it used to be never. I'm getting better and better and closer to victory. We like to, or should I say, I like to impose bets on it to make things a little more interesting. You know, we mix in a little truth and dare. Whoever loses has to do something embarrassing, etc., and stream it or something. So if that's something you're into, follow us on the social medias here. And with the announcement of this beef and going public, Hatena, I know you're watching this. I'm challenging you now. There will be a bet of some sort. I'm not sure what, but there's gonna be a lot of viewers. People are gonna watch it. It's gonna turn into a video. It's gonna be funny and the stakes are going to be very high. So thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, be the first member to join my Patreon so I can post bail for my crimes. Also, if you're a YouTuber looking for a video editor, check out this site. With that being said, remember to record your soon to be partner giving verbal consent so you don't end up behind bars like me.